As women, we are cyclical beings. Every single month we go through a certain cycle and this is what I have found to be a really, really powerful way to just connect with that and amplify the things that I'm already doing in my everyday life with more intentionality. Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mariah and I like to talk about all of the different things that contribute to creating the most vibrant, beautiful life. So today we're talking about cycle planning. And because I am a business owner and I have been for the last six years, that is the context that I'm gonna be sharing this with. But even if you aren't a business owner, you can really apply this practice to all areas of your life that are most important to you. So personally, I don't have children, but if you have children, they could be a section on this sheet. The purpose of cycle planning is just being more intentional about how I'm utilizing my time throughout the month to make sure that I'm really supporting my body through all of its different stages. Because as women, we are cyclical beings. Every single month we go through a certain cycle and this is what I have found to be a really, really powerful way to just connect with that and amplify the things that I'm already doing in my everyday life with more intentionality. So what I like to do is start out with really setting a ceremonial space as if I'm doing some sort of a ritual or I'm gonna do a really intentional meditation because that's really what it is. And I usually do this on one of the first couple days of my bleed. What this looks like is first maybe lighting a candle or lighting a bunch of candles. I have some lit behind me, but you probably can't tell. <laughs> it looks like it's too small. And I might set out some crystals, get some incense, and maybe just make myself a cup of cacao. After we have our ritual space set, I like to get out a piece of paper and I have, I have one of my past entries here with me. As a reference, the first thing I like to do is write down the four different phases of my cycle spaced out with for me, about five or six spaces in between, five or six lines in between, so that I have room to write. So the first one, I just put as my bleed. Next, we have our follicular phase. After that, we have our ovulation phase. And after that, our luteal phase. And if you don't already track your cycle, I really recommend using the app Flow, F-L-O. It's free. The Flow app will help you to just track your cycle so that you know about how long each phase is for you personally. And so I have years and years of data in that. So mine's usually fairly accurate within a day or two. If you're somebody who uses family planning or you take your temperature every day, or if you check the mucus every day, we're just using that to get a gauge on about how long each phases of your cycle are. So generally your bleed is gonna be between four and seven days. Your follicular phase will be about seven days after the end of your cycle. By the way, your cycle technically starts on the first day of your bleed. Your ovulation is about six days and your luteal phase can be between 10 and 14 days. Now, if these numbers aren't exact for you, don't freak out, don't worry or anything. These are just a very rough guideline to help us plan out our month. So the four areas that I personally like to focus on are one, I pull a card. I have a couple of different decks here with me and I really just intuitively feel into what deck do I wanna pull from? And as I go throughout each phase, I allow myself to just jump back and forth between different decks if that's just what I feel inspired to do or stick with one deck throughout the whole thing. This is just kind of the fun part for me because it's really, really fun to notice just how often the cards really reflect the exact phase so beautifully. And I like to use that as my, whatever that card is, I like to use that as my kind of contemplation for that phase, that period of time. So the second area that I focus on is movement. So I look at what movement do I wanna be doing during different times of my cycle. And I'll get more into that after I explain the four parts that I look at. The third part is social. I look at well, what do I wanna be doing socially, if anything, at that period of time. And then the fourth piece I look at is my business. I look at what do I wanna be doing, bringing into the world in my business at that time? How do I want to be prioritizing my energy so that I can actually show up in the best way for my business at that time. And now this is where I was saying at the beginning that you can absolutely add in your children if you want to for this. You can add in your pets, your family. If there's something specific that you've been wanting to do or you have certain crafts, maybe you're a musician. If there's something else that you're really wanting to prioritize in your life, add that to this list too. And just notice how putting it at different points in your month can help you actually get it done more quickly, more efficiently with more fun and ease. So as I mentioned for the first step, all I do is simply 
pull a card. And if you need any help with this, just simply Google it. So this is the first one that I picked today. I'm not actually on the first phase of my cycle. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull some with you guys for fun. Pull this one with you guys for fun. So because this one says life is a mystery, whatever phase that I pulled that for, that would be my focus. That would be what I am allowing into my space at that time. And just looking at, okay, if something totally unexpected happens that throws me off, it's okay. Life is a mystery. I don't need to try and figure it out. If something amazing and incredible happens and, you know, the mind wants to be like, how did this happen? How can I replicate it? I can come back to this card again. Life is a mystery. I don't need to figure it out. It's okay. And I just find it something fun to really focus on throughout that week or about that period of time. So now for movement, I definitely prioritize making my movement different during the four different phases of my cycle. So during my bleed, I'll usually focus on some kind of yoga or flow, some sort of qigong or doing something really, really slow, maybe a walk, but I'm not doing anything really high intensity during my bleed because energetically, you know, that's a period of death. That's a period of very, very slow, barely even moving and really going inward. And so I prioritize allowing myself to do that during that time. And I might even focus on doing some sort of internal movement, doing different types of energy practices and meditations to really connect with what's coming up within me at that time. And then during the follicular phase where I have a bit more energy, people like to call this, so the bleed, if we're looking at seasons, would be your winter. The follicular phase would be like your spring. So you're starting to get more energy. You're starting to bloom. Things are starting to come back to life for you. And at this period in time, I might get back into more nature walks, getting into some gentle hiking, but not going all in all at once on the first day that I am off my bleed because that can just be really, really draining. So just being extra gentle and listening to my body at that time and saying like, okay, if I need to rest more, that's fine. It's not a big deal. Ovulation would be our summer. During ovulation is when we have the highest energy and we have the most creativity. We have the most confidence. Our skin looks the best, all of that kind of stuff. And so during ovulation is when I'll put the most high intensity workouts and I'll really push myself and see how far I can get. And you know, that's when I'll really go for personal records and personal bests and just really pushing myself physically. And then during our luteal phase, which would be our fall or autumn, I might still be doing some of the higher intensity things, but I'm also going to be starting to slow down again and kind of prepare to go inwards and prepare for that death. And so you'll notice throughout most of the month, I'm really trying to not push myself too hard or focus on going all in all at once. I find that usually just completely drains me. And then I need to take way more time off than I would if I had just gone a little bit slower at that time. So then when it comes to social during our bleed, I'm more likely to be a lot more inward. I might stock my own internal conversations and notice what's going on in my head and in my mind, what's going on in my body at that time. I might have conversations with friends that are really, really close, that are really deeply connected to me and my partner. And I'm probably not going to do much more outside of that because it's such a time of deep inward reflection. During that follicular phase, as I'm starting to come out more into the world, I'll probably be doing more in-person and online things and finding activities to really do with friends and family members and the people that I want to spend more of my time with. And then during ovulation is when I'm really going out and doing as much as I can and soaking up all of the social activities. And what I notice is during that ovulation phase, if I don't go out and be social, I might have resentment when it comes to the few days before my period because I had all that energy built up and I didn't allow myself to express it. So whether that was through hanging out with friends, through having rough sex, through having really expressive, creative experiences, I might have that energy feel all built up. So really taking advantage of that ovulation phase can be vital if you're somebody who finds that you get to the end of your cycle and you just kind of feel regret for not doing what you felt like doing. And then during that luteal phase, the fall, I start to slow things down again. So I'm probably still seeing people, maybe just not as much, and I'm really preparing for that inner death. And then the final fourth section that I personally work with is my business. During my bleed, I like to tune into whatever my next offerings are and maybe doing more of the back end stuff, things that don't require me to be front facing, to be showing my face online or to be expressing myself that are really allowing me to just be behind the scenes, tending to myself, 
and not being so outwardly focused. And during my follicular phase, during that beautiful spring blossoming time is a great time to be opening up, inviting people into different offerings and programs, maybe creating new landing pages and sales pages, creating podcasts, creating reels, creating YouTube videos, creating the things that do require me to show up and be present with people. During ovulation is when I will be the most active in my business. So I'll be really responding to clients in Voxer. I'll be showing up maybe to free live masterclasses. I'll be really showing up online, maybe doing extra live videos for free and just really giving my all at that time. And then during the fall, during that luteal phase, when, you know, in autumn we would be harvesting our crops and celebrating what a great year we just had. I really try to do that in my business as well. Just look back, reflect, celebrate what happened over the last month, continue receiving and reaping the benefits of everything that I did over the last month, and just begin to prepare to start slowing down when my bleed's going to be coming. I hope this video has been helpful. If you have found some insight in it, I would love to hear about it down below. I also have a free womb healing meditation down in the description, so if you're interested in that, feel free to check it out. And if you have any questions about anything at all, I'd be happy to make another video about it. So just let me know in the comments. Give this video a like, hit subscribe, and chat with you in the comments. Mm -hmm.